Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Pam Peek, host of the Club 100 podcast. I'm so happy to be back with you again and to welcome you to yet another episode of our wonderful podcast. We're going to be sharing all kinds of stories of mental, physical, spiritual transformations with just incredible women and men. Um, well, honestly, we love to lift heavy things, and that's mental burdens and physical burdens and spiritual burdens. And in this case, spiritual is really going to be um, a heavy hitter and a high focus for this episode. <laughs> Just know that we're here to inspire with a raw, real, and authentic comments and moments about life's challenges, tough times, epic fails, epic triumphs. And all of this is just to help touch your heart and maybe resonate with you and inspire um, so that maybe you can relate and maybe this will also help you on your own journey. This is also a shout out to everyone out there who may not be a member yet of Club 100 and you may be interested. So run on over to 100 Club 100 and scope it out. Uh, and if you want to be a member, just put 100. That's the uh, 100 number around your name on Twitter. And then let us know you've done that. And we'll give you just a royal welcome to say the least. All right, let's hop right in there. Today's guest is someone many of us in Club 100 know very well, and that is Peter. And uh, Peter Kuhn is his actual name. Father Peter to other yes. people, although he's not in his frock today. He is a um, Roman Catholic priest who hails from the Netherlands. And so it's it's in the afternoon there and it's in the morning for me uh, here in the USA. And I just want to welcome you to the podcast, uh, Peter. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So I first stumbled upon you know, your Twitter feed when um, I had joined uh, Club 100. And it the actual title to your feed is Peter Who Struggles and Gets Up. Yeah. And I, okay, you got me at that. That was a, whoa, what's that about? And then um, I read your descriptor and it said, dedicated servant of joy in daily life, cancer survivor, here for health and fitness journey to become the best possible version of myself. All right. Now you got our attention here. Um, you know, we always talk about incredible stories and remarkable journeys that people take in their own lives. Um, and what I really want to do here is, is start in with, well, okay, what happened with this this cancer journey and, and just sort of take us back to where you were in your life when all of this hit. Yes, um, that, that happened around uh, four years ago, four and a half years ago in the winter. Um, I was for almost five years, I was a priest uh, at that moment. Uh, so, and now I'm almost 10, so it's, it was almost halfway of, of the journey. Um, I just came from a period which was very stressful because uh, sometimes people have expectations of you as a priest and um, they want you to go in a certain direction. And I, it wasn't possible for me <laughs> um, uh, because it is just not like that. And they were putting me under pressure in my former parish. And I felt a lot of stress. And then just when uh, it, it became less and less, um, I got ill uh, a couple of times. Um, the flu, um, okay, the flu got better. Uh, still fever, um, okay, uh, another flu. <laughs> and then one moment it went better. Uh, and I thought, oh, I haven't been to the gym. I, I did some workouts, not not what I do at the moment, but I I, I was in a, in a quite big gym uh, and I uh, did my program there. Nothing too spectacular at the moment, at that moment, but I was doing something. And uh, while I was working out over there, I felt this 
sort of a stiffness in my groin. Um, like a feeling, okay, I am going to feel this also in five or six days. Uh, it wasn't pain. It was, it, it was very strange. Uh, and I thought I have to quit. I have to quit. Okay. And then uh, I went back home. Uh, and then uh, um, coming home a few days afterwards, okay, it was still stiff. I felt a lump in my groin. Um, and um, well, <laughs> that didn't go away. It's strange. Eh? And then you are a doctor, but it's strange how people, how long it can take for people to go actually with something like that. To, to the doctor. Huh? You know, something I hear this all the time, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm busted too. And something is going a yeah. little crazy and, and you kind of, there's a piece of you that says it'll go away and oh, just yes. make this thing, you know, like I'll wake up tomorrow. We're back to go and back Actually, and forth. Yes. And, and there's a little dark piece of you that says, I don't know, this is not going to go well. So, yes. um, and you don't want to listen to that. And I get that because otherwise, honestly, you know, there are kind of strange little things that happen in people's lives and you don't want to be going to the doctor every five minutes with something, you know, that's just a little awry. So you waited it out a bit and most people actually do. All right. I, so I you went seven, to the doctor yeah. and did they do a biopsy? No, did um, I went? I went to the doctor uh, after seven days. It was almost a week, and then um, my my mind felt ready to <laughs> to go to the doctor. Um, and well, the poor the poor doctor, uh, she was uh, um, not not fully uh, a doctor yet, a practitioner. Uh, how do you call that in in the US in the USA? A trainee? In, well, something? they're in training. Some of them yeah. could be in residency, and you know, yes, that type of thing. it was the last part of the of of the formation to become uh, actually uh, yeah. a GP. Um, and she had me because she had more time than the ordinary doctors. Uh, and at first, she thought, "Oh, now, well, I don't think it's something, but for for sure, um, uh, we will send you to the hospital." And then. Uh, after some days, I had a, a just like when you're pregnant, you have a, an echo, <laughs> the same way, uh, and had I had that over there, um, and then uh, I will never forget that. So the the the, the nurse did the did the echo, <laughs> and then she said, uh, "I'm going to to get a doctor, but we're doing that for everyone." Eh? And I thought, "Oh, oh no, <laughs> that's not good." And then uh, she, she said, oh, yeah, just get dressed and I will get a doctor and he will take a look at it. And we will uh, we will tell you what what we were going to do next. OK, so then the doctor came and he looked at the computer screen at the echo and he said, oh, and I heard that. And I thought, oh, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> um, we have a bad habit of, you know, yeah. <laughs> one word weirdness like. Oh my gosh! Or yes. oh, yeah, or yeah, yeah, gee, yeah. or yeah. you know, all of those are bad. And yeah. <laughs> there it is. So let's fast forward a little bit. When did yeah. they make the diagnosis, and what was the diagnosis? That that was that was the same day because they they sent me to the to the, the other hospital in the city. Um, and uh, can you imagine how crazy you are? Eh? I, I I I it was a a, a day for voting. At, at, in the Netherlands, and I, in between the hospital visits, I went to vote. <laughs> okay. But I went to I went to the other um, to the other hospital, and then uh, the, the urologist uh, uh, saw me, and he said, "Yeah, well, you have uh, testicular cancer," um, and he said, "Okay, that's the bad news. The good news is there is a very very big chance." Uh, of of you getting getting better from this, getting completely healed Cured. from this. Yeah, Cured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Testicular yeah. cancer tends to have a, a as it were, um, a wonderful uh, reputation for being quite curable, depending yeah. upon when you catch it and your age and all the rest of it. Also happens to younger people too. So, yeah. um, so 
what happened? Um, did they do surgery? Did they start in with uh, what? Yeah, yeah the, the, they first did the surgery. The doctor said, uh, the urologist said, you have two options. I'm either going to have give you surgery tomorrow or in two days. And I said, okay, let's go for tomorrow then. <laughs> You're my kind of guy, you know, let's just get this sucker done. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because I am a priest, you know, it was it was just before Easter. And I thought when I go tomorrow, I still have a chance to, to uh, in one week, it would be Easter, to, to do the Easter masses and the whole Holy Week, you know. Always and, uh, thinking about other people. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Okay, thing, so yeah. you did the surgery. You did okay yeah. with the surgery. Yeah, that's that's a minor surgery. It's, it's like... A, right. Right. Like, like a, just a minor treatment. Right. Um, so that's that's quite good. And after a week or so, I was I was back on my feet again and did the majority of the of, of the, the services uh, for Easter. Um, but then, uh, yeah, the next thing was, um, well, um, you have uh, you have you have uh, uh, how do you call that? Uh, um, uh, when it is not, it has spread a bit. Yes. Um, so that is a little bit of metastatic is the word. Yeah, metastatic. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was already in my stomach, be in, in, in the lymph nodes. Right. Uh, right. If, if my English is not correct. Okay. But, but, no, no, actually you're doing phenomenally well. Okay. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, it's also somewhat common for testicular cancer uh, to spread. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yes, and it, so it now, quite you, fast. Yeah. now you're going to have to have chemotherapy. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's, that's when the big shock came because I thought, okay, well, ah, uh, they will give me once a week or so I have to go to the hospital and it's okay. But then the doctor said it was actually in a different hospital. And she said, okay, well, um, well, it's for nine weeks, but it's very intense. You, you're going to we're going to give you uh, a free free uh, yeah I, so it, it's very intense and the yeah. cycles are yeah, very the cycles yes yeah the yes, cycles the are cycles. intense so, so you did, you did the nine cycles right uh, nine nine weeks but yeah. nine cycles is uh, is non survivable I fear <laughs> yeah yeah you <laughs> just do four nine. is the max maximum yeah right. four is the maximum uh, right. amount and I got three. Uh, so it was nine weeks and I could not live here. I, I, I was uh, in the same city. We have the, the, the house where, where you get your formation as priest. And I, I returned over there. Um, and uh, well, <laughs> the first week it, it was completely in the hospital always. And then the second and third week, I only had to go to hospital once. But um, well, uh, it was to... Yeah, you're not much of a person. <laughs> how, did it, of how did it go for the entire nine weeks? Um, mm. What was it like for you by the by the end of those nine weeks um, when you were, you know, uh, undergoing the chemotherapy? What was yeah. the hardest challenge for you when you were doing this for nine weeks? And the the hardest the hardest challenge was always um after the first first week of the cycle um the tuesdays and the wednesdays um and the hardest challenge was um it was a side effect of the chemotherapy um you immediately cannot go to the toilet anymore <laughs> uh, when you get uh, one of those those medications and then for 10 days and then uh, after 10 days, the body all wants, wants to have it out. And that was absolutely terrible. <laughs> that, was, that was all, the, all the, 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 the fluids were going over there and felt light in the head. And oh, that was, yes, yes. And, and also once after, the, um, after one of the, 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 the Tuesday chemotherapy sessions, I started foaming. <laughs> that was also not... Very nice. Yeah, you know, your body is yeah. reacting to some very toxic stuff going into it in yeah. order to counteract what's going on with um, the metastatic um, cells. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, you know, that doesn't surprise me. Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Prior to your um, having this diagnosis and undergoing um, this huge challenge, 
you you noted uh, that you normally go to the gym and yes. that you work out. How long have you been doing that? Has that has the fitness thing always been a part of your life? Oh, no, not at all. No, no. Um, I played tennis. I played uh, football eh? in the States. You call it soccer. Um, I did all kinds of things. Um, and also a long, a long time, uh, nothing. Uh, to be honest. <laughs> okay, that's no. totally cool. Yeah. Yeah. So during this time, when you had the diagnosis and the nine weeks and the rest of it, you know, um, I'm I'm sure your body underwent a lot of changes because oh. you couldn't work out, right? No, uh, um, sometimes I was on the cycle. Um, ah. what, what I learned during the chemotherapy is that is it is not wise to stay in the room and in the bed all the time. So. Good. What what I what I did is um, I often I often went uh, downstairs and when I had guests I I sat with them in the restaurant because it gave it gives a different smell when you're always smelling your own hemo sweat it makes you feel very miserable <laughs> so, so you so, you actually did get up and and move yes. around and yes. um, you did yeah, some with walking my uh, yeah. With my friend, uh, the uh, always they had uh, they had to flush my kidneys, um, so I always had uh, uh, some kind of a bag with fluids. Uh, also, when I didn't have uh, chemotherapy, but I took it I took it down, and then uh, when it started bleeping, I, I uh, <laughs> because you know, um, especially at the last cycle in the hospital, I was with uh, that was quite remarkable actually, um, and I was with. Two people who were far, 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 way uh, less off than I am. I was at the moment. They were they they that they, they had terrible uh, terrible surgeries and things like that. And and I thought, let 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 them have their peace. But that was also funny. That was um, theoretically impossible. What what happened there? Because um, I am a priest, eh? and then uh, opposite of me. He, the, the man asked, okay, what's your profession? Right? Because I was in my pajamas over there. What's your profession? And he said, uh, yeah, well, I, I said, well, I'm a, I'm a priest. And he said, uh, oh, that's that's cool. My, my nephew is a priest. And then the neighbor said, my brother is a priest. And then the <laughs> guy next to me said, my father was a priest. <laughs> it's a thing. Um... And that's, that's, that is statistically impossible because we are not with many priests in the, in the Netherlands at the moment. Interesting. So Interesting. Ah, oh, the what universe, the universe is saying something. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. To say the least, to say the least. So when you ended your chemotherapy and all of that, that was uh, four years ago or? Yes. Four years ago in the summer. Yes. Okay. Yes. So four years ago in the summer, how have you been since then? Well, um, it, 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 it is a road of going up and down, always. Um, there are still a lot of side effects. and But what was clear for me at that moment was that I did want to get a better version, to be, become a better version of myself. So, so um, as to withstand the uh, uh, next blows of, of the body, so to say, uh, because I thought maybe I still have to have a surgery or something. And in that in anticipation of the surgery, um, after a few days after my last cycle, I went to the gym again, uh, completely bold. And, and, and uh, um, what I could do then was... Uh, sit at the, the, the cross trainer, uh, no, the, do the cross trainer at the, the minimum level for four minutes. That was the let me ask you do. a question. Yeah. I know a lot of people who, after having had all of this happen to them, the last thing on their mind is like, hey, I'm hitting the gym. <laughs> Why did you do that? What role does going to the gym fill in your life? What did it represent to you? No, I needed to be ready for um, maybe a surgery or maybe something else. Um, when you are when you are more fit and when you are stronger, you can you can have um, you can resist the blows better eh? of 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 all what uh, of all kinds of diseases or or illnesses or surgeries. You know, 
you, 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 uh, that's, and that's, that's your mind that's yeah. your mind and your body it's both yeah. right yeah so what yeah. you were already doing is you were being proactive yeah um and you were saying okay well you know this is a I got, you know, uh, side effects from all the therapy and might be some upcoming, you know, medical procedures and all these. You never know what's coming around the corner. And what you wanted to do was be prepared. So everyone out there in the podcast world listening to this, listen up to this life lesson, because, you know, at the end of the day, when you're thinking about taking care of yourself, it's it's not just about, hey, looking spiffy in the mirror and, you know, fitting into a better pair of jeans. Forget that noise. I mean, if that happens, God bless. However, yes, actually, however, in this case, God bless. Um, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, uh, what what Peter's actually addressing is one of the most important lessons you're ever going to hear, which is taking care of yourself is preparing you, is laying down a foundation so that, you know, you're ready so that whenever something's going to hit you in the head again, it's, it's like, bring it on. Come on now. You know, I got yes, this. Exactly. exactly. Right. I love yes. that. So you yes, went back I, to the I also, gym. <laughs> I also wanted to make my return, of course, as fast as possible in the, in the parish. Eh? I, I was too fast. I was, but being alone at home is not fun uh so so when you're sick so that was also one of the reasons i wanted to to keep my daily rhythm so um even if i didn't feel i i felt very bad but but still i was at the gym at eight or something in the morning at 8 a.m uh, because i didn't want to lose my my normal rhythm um and also you're surrounded by i bet you know a lot of people at the gym and you know yes uh, yes or no or or just a, even one or two who just say hey good morning peter what it is yeah that 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 exactly is also important yes of course um no so uh, i i started again and uh, it it was basically only cardio training um and then very very slowly some some weights uh, some machines um, Over the course of this past four years, you know, you had begun that journey with, you know, coming back to mind, body, fitness for all intent and purposes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so have you been able to use the, you know, your this mind, body, fitness to help you over the past four years stay strong in the face of other challenges? Did you mm-hmm. have to go back and get more? chemotherapy did you have to have another surgery no 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 there was nothing uh every time it was it looked very very well <laughs> i had i had some struggles with the uh with hormones uh unfortunately the, yeah that's uh, normal it was, it was around or just lower than what the the, the minimum level of testosterone would would be for for right. for men so uh, that starts at nine or ten or something and i I had sometimes 5.7 and that's terrible for men. That's, oh, that's, that was, you want to commit suicide almost eh? because you feel we are not, we are not um, used to to these cycles. We always have the the, quite of a normal, stable, stable path. eh? And then you you go through some kind of a a, a low and then it was 5.7 or something. uh, And then, oh, I said, I sat at the breakfast table and I was thinking, I don't know why, what I'm feeling, but, but it, it felt like that they had, that they said, okay, you, they murdered yesterday, your whole family or something, you know? Right. Right. It, right, it felt right. like that. So sad. Yeah. And then, uh, but, how have you been able to work around that? Um, that's, that is also where uh, the, the more serious weight training came in because uh, it's also good for the hormones. That's and correct. That's also, once I realized that, uh, that especially the compound movements are very good for you, uh, I wanted to do that. Um, but I also had a struggle <laughs> with that because at, at my gym, um, they weren't specialized in that. Uh, and I got some help. 
also from a, uh, in, in the, at a certain point of time from a very, very well known uh, Twitter fitness uh, person, uh, Eva from Switzerland. Um, and uh, she gave me uh, a schedule, a training schedule. And they looked at it at the gym and they said, because I asked that for, for help, eh? for, for, to, to, for a bit certain exercises. And they said that it's impossible. <laughs> That's it. And it was it was just light training with, with low weights and with a lot of repetitions, you know? So you laughed at them and you said, well, I'm doing it anyway. So yes, thanks for sharing. Yes, yes. And, I, it, and it, 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 it took a while um, before realizing that um, I was... That's also where the, the Twitter fitness thing came in uh, of, of talking about the workouts and of talking about uh, the plans, the, 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 the food also, the nutrition, the, the whole thing. Um, so I was, I was sharing my story. I was sharing my, my life or my, my training with, with people on Twitter, but not, not in reality. So, and I thought at a given point of time, after a few years, I want to do also that. So um, after the Corona, uh, so we, we jumping a bit. Uh, oh, time. yeah. Um, after the Corona, the pandemic uh, first period, so to say, in the winter of 2020, um, I joined a new gym. I know that was last year, actually. It was, it was in 21. And, yeah. and this is a and gym that's, that's more geared up to being able to help you yeah. the way you needed to yeah. do it. That, and then you were able better. to do it. Yeah. That was already much better. That was also a small gym, um, actually directly opposite where I live here. <laughs> so that well, was good quite for ideal. you. Yeah, yeah, that was quite ideal. But but unfortunately, they quit um, this. Uh, yeah, that was this year. Yeah, this in the in the winter. Um, and they were a, a new, yeah, a new person came in with a new strategy, and they they removed all the all the free weights, and then only machines. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, of course, uh, I I thought, well, I have to go then because uh, that's too much help. I I need to do it myself, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a very interesting point. You know, yeah. everyone has to customize their their fitness for themselves. Whatever yeah. works for you. You know, there are some people who just sort of, you know, spend all day with kettlebells. I have no Perfect. problems with that because I Perfect. love kettlebells. Yeah. However, um, you know, it's always important to mix it up, to use, you know, free weights, to use machines when you want to or, yeah. you know, some kind of apparatus and, and kettlebell, whatever works for you. Um, and it's really important to change it up and keep challenging your body, to say the least. I, I, let me ask you a quick question. How did you get involved with Club 100? Um, that was also through some of my members. I, I think uh, Tora invited me uh, also. And I know it. I, I knew it already a bit. Um, and I, at first, I didn't think... It was something for someone like me, <laughs> but but um, I learned now also uh, with with some other people that a lot of people had their struggles and all people had unique stories. <laughs> well, uh, as which... a priest, you know yeah. that because oh, yes. you know appearances are deceiving, and oh. and as you've seen from the other podcasts for Club One Hundred. Every single person has struggles and challenges. Yes. And every single person, you know, um, has to be able to, you know, embrace whatever that life journey is and, and make do with it. Uh, and like you, when you say you want to be the best version of yourself, everyone's striving to do that. Whether yes. it's addiction, whether it's, yes. you know, a medical condition, um, whether it's PTSD from the wars, um, whatever the issue may be, I think we're we're seeing a common thread here in all the podcasts, which is That's everyone's true. got this very unique, rich, incredible journey. And then, you know, you have to create your own path through the whole thing. Yes. And they're going to be, as I said in the beginning of the podcast, epic fails 
and epic triumphs. Um, but you just you never quit and you just keep this whole thing rolling. That's yes, what this yes. is about. So when you joined Club 100, what role did Club 100 have in your life? Well, I'm not not a member for a long time, but it is nice to to share the stories and the, to, to, to get also um, uh, advice sometimes, uh, but but also to share what you're doing <laughs> in the in the gym um, and also to share the goal because the, the, the goal is still up because I want um, next year is going to be and I say it's going to be I'm not saying um, it might be it has to be there you next go year is the year that I want to be the doctor wants that I want the doctor to say to me you're completely cured <laughs> after five years and then uh, all the all the examinations are still good uh, they will say okay we, we not, we, it's not necessary to see each other anymore um, and I want to do that with the in the best shape of my life and I it was my dream already uh, when I had cancer and uh, when I went to the cycles and uh, all of the times um, when I was on the verge to improve myself <laughs> in, a, in a good way, it was COVID or some, some kind of an injury or something. Or I recently had uh, one of my veins in my leg, uh, 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 got a laser treatment. <laughs> um, and uh, I know now that my leg is a lot better. I, I knew for, for maybe... If, four or five years or something that that was going to be an issue everyone could see that a lot of varicose veins and uh no so that leg is better um and i actually have a good feeling about it so so um in my new gym this which has only i mean uh, which maybe has 50 55 members or something it's like in a garage. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and yeah, it's, we can it's do garage gyms. <laughs> it's, it's a powerlifting gym. Can, can you imagine me, me going in there? And uh, but but when when the former gym closed um, or changed its 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 concept, I had to go somewhere, and uh, I had to I found a, a new gym with the best trainers of the city. I can I can guarantee you that that that's that's that those those. Uh, Athletes that come there, they, they do national championships, and uh, also one of the of the juniors got a medal for the uh, junior championship worlds, I believe, in, in Turkey or something uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and um, they, it's it's such an such a great community over there. We, we know each other. Um, we we know what the goals are. They know me. They know. Um, the, the most most of them are really the the, the strength athletes who, who go into competitions eh? and um, well, my, you don't my, need my journey is completely different you don't need competition what you're no. doing is you're you're no. improving yourself becoming the best version of yourself no. in the no. way you define it no. because you're in control here and no. you know it's interesting after losing control you know, because that's what happens after a diagnosis like that. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know, um, now you you really appreciate it more than ever before. Oh, yes. Because, oh, yeah. And there yeah. there you have your health. Do you mind if I ask you what your age is? I'm 45. You're young. And that's, yeah. you know, so you've got a whole life ahead of you. You're literally right. entering, you know, like. Um, almost the halfway point in your life, if everything yeah. goes well, knock on wood. And so, yeah. you know, you've got years and years ahead of you, decades, um, and you're laying down a very powerful foundation for being yeah. able to thrive during that time. You survived all of the, you know, chemotherapy and the rest of it. Now it's time to thrive. And, yes, and, that's what I want to do. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's not easy because uh, still, yeah, I still have, uh, for example, it, it, it's getting colder here. And, and now I have the uh, polyneuropathy again. So no feeling in my feet, like walking on a pillow, you know. Um, that's and this is a residual of the chemotherapy. Yeah. 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 And people need to understand that. So, you know. 
uh, when you say that Peter who struggles and gets up, when you wrote that, what what was on your mind? Um, a lot of a, a lot of trying <laughs> in the last few years, uh, a lot of setbacks, but always finding a new gym or a new trainer or a new coach or uh, renewed health, so to say, to keep on going. And uh, because there is no option, because when I do, don't do this now, when I'm 45, mm-hmm. how, how will I feel when I'm 55 or 60 or something? I will feel like 60 or 70 years old in, 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 at that moment of time. When I when I would not do when I would not work on myself and I would be a couch potato so to say, then you 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 like like we say <laughs> like we say in in Dutch you're sort of a, a, a food for the cat you know <laughs> yeah you are food for the cat honey listen I love that food for the cat come on guys out there on the podcast land <laughs> write that one down you know I don't know how you did this. You know, quite frankly, but you stumbled upon one of the most powerful tenets, one of the most powerful, you know, rules of of living long and living well. Long means nothing if you're not living well, if you don't have a quality of life. But exactly. you have this remarkable ability to look ahead and to plan um, and to say to yourself, you're right. You're 45 now. And a lot of people go, oh, you know, I'm 45. I'm feeling pretty good. I'll I'll get to taking care of myself later on. And, you know, they kind of blow it off and whatever. Yeah, well, I got news for you, right? You know, by the time you hit 55, you've been sitting on your ass this whole time, not taking care of yourself in terms of nutrition, in terms of physical activity, in terms of your spirituality, everything. If you're not doing that, then you have a really, really nightmare situation waiting for you. So yes. now's the time. I don't care if you're 20 out there, if you're 30, 40, 50, it's never too late, but make it easier on yourself by starting as early as possible, lay down a strong foundation. And then no matter what happens, you know, in the future, you can just sort of say, okay, I got a strong foundation to depend upon so that I can now rock and roll and navigate and adapt and adjust the way you've done so well, Peter. I mean, you are remarkable in that, in that regard. And that's why I'm just sort of stopping and making everyone like absorb this lesson, you know, be thinking, you know what I like to do? I always like to say this, think with the end in mind, Exactly. think with the end in mind. I want to crush it when I'm 80. It's like, yeah, my way, you know, and relative to being 80, you know, if whenever um, I want to be able to say, hey, man, you know, I'm doing the best. But I couldn't say that. Unless I already had a strong foundation, yeah. you don't just pick it up at 79 and a half and and expect to just totally crush it at 80. It's going to take you a while. It's much longer. It's, uh, you know, it's a pain in the ass. You're doing the smart thing. You're doing the foundation right it, it, now. It's, it's it's also because of responsibility, you know. I feel responsible also for as as being a priest for my parishioners um, to be there, to be available as much as I can. Uh, it is not always easy. Sometimes I, I I suffer a lot of fatigue. I really have to 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 say, okay, well, I'm not going to do long meetings or something in the evening because. That that makes me very uh, <laughs> that, that that increases the fatigue enormously, um, but I want to be there as, as much as possible. And I still also have my mother, um, who is a five-time uh, cancer survivor, by the way, and who turns eighty-five next month. <laughs> Good <laughs> and, for her. Yes, 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 and she still lives on her own. Um, but I have to be I have to be available for people. Um, so that's Were why they available to you. What yeah. happened during this whole time? Were your parishioners there to support you? Oh, huh. yes. Um, I was there for one month and a half. I just changed, changed parishes. So 
and they, they, they hardly knew me. <laughs> and then uh, they supported me a lot, a lot. Um, also, uh, the, 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 the university chaplaincy, um, where, where I did also uh, the extra work for uh, on the on the Sundays, they were also always there. It's it's unbelievable. Okay, I, I really good. felt carried. Yeah. So it takes a village, you know. Yeah. You really want to make certain that you've got the the right support system. But even with all that, you're by yourself at nighttime. You know what I mean? Yes. Like yes. you know, you've got those quiet times when it's just you and stillness. And, and your thoughts and whatever. And this is why having, you know, a really strong conviction and focus and determination to get through it is so, so powerful. Um, yes. And uh, I'm glad you were able to navigate that because it sounds like it's, it's wild and crazy. So today, let's look at right now. Right now, you, you're back to a routine with your fitness. Yes, um, it's going going well at the moment. I'm I'm coming back, of course, from the the little treatment for for my leg, yeah, the, the the laser treatment, uh, where I could not do leg exercises for a couple of months because it's I had blood clots in my leg, you know, and so that's uh, <laughs> we had to take a bit easy. But um, now I'm doing the deadlift again and I'm squatting again. Um, the bench press is flying at the moment. Uh, and all the all the other exercises also. Uh, so I really believe this time that that I can break through my my sort of um, yeah the level I I used to have always uh, sort of a basic level. And I really think for for next time with next time in mind with with, with extra attention for nutrition, I can break through it and that uh, that it. Uh, it will be done. <laughs> I love summer. it. Can you do me a favor? Uh, explain your Twitter hang uh, handle. Aman Eskiri. Oh, Aman Eskiri is 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 actually something something from Latin. Uh, it uh, it comes from from uh, Thomas Akempis. Is 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 one of the uh, writers of the early mid no the late Middle Ages. Uh, and it it says I love to be unknown, so uh, it's sort of it's sort of an um, an emphasis on interior life mm. um, and not so much uh, of of outward outward living. Um, that that's sort of a choice, but it's also the way I am naturally. I'm a very quiet uh, person um, who. Um, puts on almost classical music when there's nobody in the gym. <laughs> so, oh my God. Don't like, tell the, the gym bros that you're putting on like, you know, Vivaldi in the gym. This is, this could damn no, near kill them. So, some, sometimes, uh, sometimes piano music or something. <laughs> oh my God. Dookie, did you hear that? Oh my gosh. He's doing classical music to his deadlift. No, no, nobody, nobody's there, but it's for the concentration. And, uh, yeah, I yeah. love it. No, no, yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. For the I think, concentration and I think a lot I of still, us have wild and crazy uh, yeah. song books, you know, for because, what we do in the gym. So yeah. I, I love the classical music piece of this. If you were to, you know, talk to someone out there right now, you know, you're a priest. And so you've done like countless sessions of counseling people and whatever. Yeah. What if someone was feeling, you know, kind of helpless, hopeless, and a little bit defeated about life in general, and they want to take better care of themselves. They want to mm -hmm. be able to, you know, um, eat better, move more, um, you know, do, do more spiritual and interior work, but they're kind of like, uh, you know, like mm -hmm. life's tough. What would you tell them? Well, I would I would suggest uh, the, the the suggestions of of uh, someone who lived 500 years ago. <laughs> we exist 2,000 years. Okay, I cannot help it. So, <laughs> um, Saint um, uh, Ignatius uh, is that the name? I don't know. No, There's, Saint Ignatius. Uh, of, I know very of, well. Of Loyola, yes, yep. the, the the founder of the Jesuits, um, and he said or he suggested going to swim against the tide when all the fish are like this. I mean by this, the following, when everything says in yourself, oh, I need to take a rest or something, or 
uh, when when it's too much of 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 or you feel a bit down or you feel a bit a bit sad or something swim against the tide because when you feel not good uh, you tend to sit on the couch and do nothing um but actually when you are starting to get more active do, you do more than you did normally <laughs> swim against the tide um uh, you you will feel better <laughs> because uh you feel you you feel alive <laughs> oh if you that's give, the point yeah. that's the point you feel alive if you're sitting on a couch having a, a pity party um yeah. and and saying oh woe is me and you know the rest of it do you feel alive uh uh-uh. but if you get up and you get into nature and and maybe say hello to a stranger and smile and 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 exactly. start engaging guess what welcome to yeah. life honey um guess, guess, that's, that's what happens i yes. love that i love yeah. that lesson you know and you feel so, alive there's, there's so much also people can can uh, contribute to the lives of others everyone has so many talents so many talents uh and uh, it, it would be be so sad when um when when they will not be used (laughs) i know i i i can't thank you for the gift of that last uh life lesson it's beautiful and i'm here to tell you that all of club 100 is right there for you and everyone else watching this podcast whether they're a member or not um they're all here to support you peter because you've been through a lot and you know you gift us with all of these life lessons. So we'll just give you some major shout outs. That's for damn sure. And um, definitely be here to support you. It's also great to, you know, have yet another marvelous member from across the pond, um, yes, you know, pond, uh, pond. since we're based in the USA. So it's great to be able to reach uh, members all around the world because we have them everywhere, Australia and just everywhere. So, Once again, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Um, I I can't, you know, begin to uh, express our gratitude for your sharing your amazing story. And everyone out there, seriously, this wraps up another episode of the Club 100 podcast. Wow, was this a an amazing story, but they all are every single one of them. I hope you're really enjoying this. Look, I'm Dr. Pam Peak. I'm host of the Club 100 podcast, and I'm really proud member of Club 100. So learn more about us. Follow us at 100 Club 100. If you want to be a new member, give a shout out and we'll welcome you. Thank you and have an absolutely Amazing day.